Okay, welcome back. Uh, so for this lesson, we're going to investigate how to pass a variable to another function uh, by value and by reference. And most importantly, this is where we get to see pointers being used for passing by reference. So to get started, as you can see here, uh, we have this file that ha that's called pointers part 4.cpp what it has in it as this is source code one function called main we're going to need a couple functions to demonstrate passing by reference and passing by value again which we have done in previous lessons uh, with functions but at least uh, we get to compare these two concepts and get the idea and why passing by reference can be uh, a good strategy for uh, controlling the information stored at a certain memory location um, within the, uh, even if you step outside the scope of a specific function. And uh, we'll explain what scope is. Uh, so when you declare something within a function, that something lives within that function. It lives and dies within that function. So if I did something like this, int a, then a only lives within the function main. So if I have another function here, uh, let's call it um, void uh, foo one, okay? And let me open curly brace for it and close the curly brace. So that's the delineation of the uh, function definition, foo one. And let's say I had something like this, int b, then b only lives within foo one. Main has no idea what b is, uh, you know, if you try to access B from here and you try to do something like this, you will get a, uh, first of all, you're going to get a syntax error right here if I try to compile this. Uh, first, let me save this just to prove the point here. Uh, so execute compile, you'll get an error right here. And that's simply telling me that B is not within the scope of main. It does not exist within that function. So that's an important uh, restriction. Uh, within this language, uh, either in C++, Java, C, many languages, uh, uh, when you declare a variable, it's typically local to that function. Okay, so could I have another int b here, and this would compile? Indeed, you will. And notice here, these two b's are not the same. This b here belongs to foo one, and this b here belongs to main. So the advantage of local variables is that you could reuse the name for the variable somewhere else without affecting this one, for example, okay? Now, uh, let's go ahead and jump to the details of passing by value first, which is a review of what we've done before. So let's say a equals eight. And let's say we want to pass that value to full one. So what you need is a parameter before you call foo one. Notice I haven't called foo one yet. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm trying to define it. So what I'm gonna do is put a parameter here, and let's call it param one right now. And what's gonna happen is for you to call foo one, and you wanna pass a or the value of a to foo one, you would do something like this. This would be the function call, foo one. And then you open the parentheses and pass the variable and that is what we call passing by value so this would be here passing by value now can we prove that actually the value got passed yeah we could actually see out so within the the uh, scope of that function what do we want to execute uh, we want to execute a, a print to the screen where we could uh, inspect the value stored in param one so you could say uh, param1 equals, and then param1, okay? And let's see what do we have, or endel here. What happens here when you compile and run? And sure enough, param1 has eight, which it received from A. Okay, just to make sure it's not a fluke, go ahead and change eight to something else, like 99. Compile and run again. 
And sure enough, 99 got passed by value. Now, here's the thing. If you pass by value, does it have any effect? Let's say I do something like this. Param1 okay, is going to be equal to minus 1. So I changed it after I print. If I do come back, will it have an effect on A? So if I do a C out, so when I come back to main after calling for 1, had that altered A since A n and param1 share a value? And the answer is going to be no. So we're going to have to prove that. A, after calling foo1, and then we're going to do, we're going to see that A will remain 99. Okay, so let's compile and run here. And sure enough, it had no effect on A within main. Okay, so it simply passed a copy of the value 99 over to foo1, okay, printed it. Then when you try to modify it by changing it to a minus 1, great, but that only lived, param1, only lived within foo1. So that means by the time you come, came back to main, A was still 99. Okay, all right, fantastic. So now let's do a passing by reference. And we get to see now that you have access to that variable indirectly. So we need foo2 as a function, so void here. Void means you're not returning anything. You simply have a function. Uh, let's call it foo2. This time, I'm going to have a pointer right here. So int, asterisk, and I'm going to call it ptr for now. Okay, and let's open curly brace and close the curly brace. So I have a variable pointer called PTR. Okay, what's going to happen now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do foo2. Okay, now remember, when we did pointers, you need to assign an address to a pointer. So you're not just going to write A, you're going to write and percent A here. So this is extremely important if you want to pass by reference, you are going to pass the address of A over to foo2. Actually, this should be foo2 right here. Okay. And what's going to happen is the pointer now has the address of A. Now we can manipulate what's in A indirectly. We have full access to that memory location. So this is here is passing by reference. Okay. Well, let's see. What happens when you do that? Well, first, let's dereference the pointer and see if we indeed get that 99. So see out. And we're going to dereference, so start PTR equals. Okay, now if you try to print just PTR, you're going to get an address. So you want to do star PTR, which means dereference. Show me the data pointed to by the address that PTR has. So the behavior of the pointer is the same thing we've learned in the uh, two lessons prior to this. So let's see what happens here. Compile, to, uh, compile and run. Okay, and as you can see, start PTR equal 99. Okay, fantastic. So now let's do the same thing we did with foo1. Let's alter the value pointed to by PTR. Okay, so what do we do? We could do something like this star PTR. Now, do not do PTR and change PTR itself. If you do, you're changing the actual address. Uh, but if I do star PTR, I am changing the content pointed to by that address. And let, let's change this one to a minus two. Okay, now let's do the same thing here. See out. A after calling foo Two, and let's see what happens now. So we're going to see a fundamental difference between it and calling by value, right? So end out. And let's go ahead and do this, compile and run. And sure enough, what happened is after you came back to main, A got altered. 
in the function foo2. So now you have minus 2. While, remember, this line ran in main. So that means within foo2, right, the PTR pointer had access to A. 